in a world of uncertainty human beings and therefore businesses are often engrossed in predicting the outcomes of events in this video we will attempt to understand how we can use regression to predict outcomes welcome back to the channel learning puri a channel for applied learning like always on this channel you get tutorials and tips on a variety of topics today we will deep dive into the world of linear regression a fundamental concept in machine learning and data science that unlocks valuable insights from complex data sets in this video i will guide you through the entire process of mastering linear regression we will begin by understanding the basics and implement them in a real world scenario so grab a notebook to take notes and a cup of coffee and let's get started all right before we jump into the depths of regression let us lay the foundation linear regression is a statistical approach that helps us understand and model the relationship between two variables that is an independent variable and a dependent variable through this model we can make predictions uncover patterns and gain a deeper understanding of our data independent variables are also referred to as predictor variables and dependent variable as response variable now there are two main types of linear regression techniques simple linear regression and multiple linear regression simple linear regression focuses on a single predictor variable while multiple linear regression incorporates multiple predictors making it more suitable for complex scenarios however in this video we will attempt to decipher and implement simple linear regression simple linear regression is the most basic and simplest form to understand the complexity of conducting linear regression when it comes to simple linear regression we follow a straightforward process involving five steps step 1 involves gathering the data for both the independent and dependent variables step 2 entails visualizing the data using scatter plots to understand the relationship once we have a sense of the data we move on to the next step step 3 is where we fit a line to our data points using the least squares method this line represents our regression equation step 4 is all about assessing the model's goodness of fit we use metrics like r squared mean squared error and p values to evaluate the model's performance and finally in step 5 we can utilize our model to make predictions or analyze various scenarios let us commence by jumping directly to step 2 since we already have data picked up from a marketing campaign for a consumer product a small and a relevant excerpt of the data file is mentioned here this is for sake of convenience of understanding and avoid the tedium in the calculations we have two variables that is sales in 1000 units and a discount percentage offered for the product over a period to check for any visible relationship between the two variables we use a scatter diagram of the data points on preliminary observation we can say that as the discount for the product increases the sales increase as well we can run this by running a correlation and calculating the pearson's correlation coefficient which is a high value positive sign this value confirms that positive correlation exists in the data set this value does not conclude anything beyond the fact that there appears to be a positive linear association between the two variables though intuitively it may be true a positive correlation also does not attribute higher sales as only due to the increase in discounts to know more about correlation and pearson's correlation coefficient you can check out these two videos over here all right we can proceed beyond this point and check whether we can predict the sales for any other discount offer in taking this step a word of caution that we are still not attempting to prove causation instead we are taking a step ahead to check for 
probable causation. To achieve prediction, we employ the process of linear regression. As mentioned earlier in the video, since the process is employed using a single predictor variable, we also refer to it as simple linear regression. In step 3, to conduct linear regression, we use the least squares method. In the least squares method, we attempt to identify and fit a line to all these points in such a manner that we minimize the distance between the actual coordinates and that of the fitted line. The line with the least distance from the actual data points will be the line of best fit. To achieve this task, we will run multiple lines through these data points and calculate the distance of the data points from each line. To commence the process, let us assume we did not have any information on the discount provided to the consumer. In such a scenario, the best estimate of sales would be the average sales figure. Irrespective of the discount provided, the only sales outcome we would know is the average sales figure. Obviously, this is not an optimal outcome. Let us first plot a line through the point y is equal to 53.409. Next, we will plot any arbitrary line passing through the data like so. If we observe these two lines, it is obvious that quite a few data points are clustered better around this new line than the first line. Therefore, the first line built on the average sales value is not a good fit for the data. So, it is not a good representative of the data points. However, it serves as a good starting point to compare every future iteration conducted. Moving ahead, we cannot rely only on observation to check the best fit of a line. Hence, we will check for the distance of these points by computing the difference between the y coordinates of our data and the mean of these data points that is y bar is equal to 53.409. In other words, we are comparing the data points with a line that runs through the average of the data points on the y axis. The computed difference obtained denotes the deviation or the variation of the data points from a central average figure. We take the square of the difference to avoid a zero value when all differences are added up. We call this figure the sum of squares which is 541.909. Further, we see that this arithmetic is akin to calculating the variance of the data and hence we can also call this the variation of the data points from their arithmetic mean. We will use this first sum of squares as a good point of comparison for all the variations that we will compute for all the different lines. We do this since this is the only baseline with which we can evaluate the performance of other lines. The objective will be to find a line with a variation of sum of squares that is lower than this baseline variation or the sum of squares. Note that this is not the only objective. However, as a starting point, this will serve as a good estimate. Now, from fundamental math, we write the equation of any straight line as y is equal to mx plus c, where m is the slope between the data points measured like so. c is the y-axis intercept. And x will take different values for which we calculate the corresponding y-coordinate. Using our data, the average slope comes to around 5.5. For the y-intercept, we will extend a trend line to the y-axis to get the intercept somewhere around minus 6. This is a good starting point for fitting different lines to our data. The following table depicts the sum of squares for this line denoted by the equation y1 equal to 5.5x minus 6. Substituting x values from our data, we calculate the new predicted value y1. We now compute the sum of squares for this line by comparing the new y values with the arithmetic average of the first line. That is, y is equal to 53.409. 
Comparing the sum of squares of the baseline with the new line, we observe that the variation is way above the variation of the baseline and not comparable. Therefore, we will tweak the values of the slope and y-intercept of this line slightly to check for combination of values above and below the existing one. The process yields us multiple lines with their respective sum of squares mentioned as in the table. If we plot a line graph of the sum of squares for various lines, we see that the points depicted by the three lines at the bottom of the line graph appear to have sum of squares lower than that of the baseline. Note that as mentioned earlier, this is not the only check to perform. We also need to compare the actual values of y with that of the predicted values and compare their variances as well. Further, we need to identify the line with minimum variation between actual and the predicted value. However, this process, if conducted manually, is computationally intensive and better managed by analytical software. In the fourth step, we have used Excel for all these computations to identify the best fit line. Excel also checks the computations statistically to provide the equation of the best fit line. Excel, R or Python can manage these computations very well. However, for this tutorial, we are not looking at how to use the analytical software. For this tutorial, I have used the regression option provided by Excel. Here is the output from the best fit regressed line. Let us look at the analysis provided by Excel. We will make the following key observations. First, the y-intercept and the slope, also called the coefficient for the x-coordinate, is remarkably close to that of the iterations we were working with. Using them, the equation of the best fit line is as follows. Second, using this equation, the calculated predicted value is like so. Third, the difference between the actual value in our data and the predicted value yields us the variation between the best fit regressed line and the actual value. Obviously, we call this difference the residual. Fourth, the sum of squares of the difference between the actual value and the predicted value is referred to as the sum of squares of the residual. Fifth, the sum of squares of the difference of predicted value for the best fit regressed line with the average of actual value is also referred to as the sum of squares of regression. Sixth, if we observe these two values closely, we find that their addition yields us the sum of squares for the baseline. If you remember, this is the value from where we started the exercise for identifying the best fit regression line. Therefore, we refer to this sum of squares as the sum of squares total. Seventh, if we divide the sum of squares of a regression by the sum of squares of the total, we get the coefficient of determination, which is 0.9058 as seen in the output table. On close observation of the formula for variance, this is also the variance of regression divided by the total variance of the data. If we convert this figure to percentage, then in other words, we are trying to provide a figure for how much variation in the actual data is explained by the best fit regression line. The coefficient of determination, therefore, provides an especially important statistic to evaluate the best fit regressed line. The value will always range between 0 and 1. Ideally, this value should be as close to 1 as possible for the equation of the best fit line to be usable. Using coefficient of determination, we observe that about 9-10% to 10 of variation in the data is not explained by the best fit line. Hence, we cannot identify discounts as the only and complete cause for higher sales. This will lead us to undertake an exercise to identify other variables that contribute to higher sales. However, this is a crucial step over and above simply computing association between sales and discount provided. Alright, we had found the equation of the best fit line as mentioned. 
the equation can also be written as follows where y is predicted value beta naught is the intercept beta 1 is the regression coefficient which is how much we expect y to change as x increases x is the independent variable and epsilon is equal to the error of estimate or how much variation there is in our estimate of the regression coefficient this error represents any unexplained variation in the regression coefficients in short you have noticed carefully that in the process of regression we were interested in estimating the values for beta naught and beta 1 whilst achieving this we were able to identify the best fit line that had the lowest error amongst all possible combinations of beta naught and beta 1 as mentioned earlier the exercise is computation intensive and managed better by analytical software in a sense beta naught and beta 1 are identified using the following equations such that error is minimized with this exercise we have concluded the basic process of simple linear regression however any linear regression follows certain assumptions for the success of its validity and they are as follows a the relationship between independent variables and dependent variables is linear b there are no hidden relationships between the variables in other words there is no autocorrelation between the different values of residual c error term or the residuals follow a normal distribution d the size of error does not change significantly across the values of the independent variable e no significant outliers in the data set we will deal with these assumptions in part 2 of this tutorial keep watching this channel space so that you do not miss part 2 till then subscribe to the channel like this video and share it with your friends and acquaintances Till then, stay healthy and stay peaceful.